Hey guys, my name is Dirty from the Cinecom YouTube channel and welcome to Adobe's Learn from the Pro series. In this tutorial, we're gonna put words into action and create a fun animation and save that as a motion graphics template. So I already have an empty composition and I'm going to start off with creating a solid. Right click in the timeline, new solid. You can choose a color, but I'm gonna go for a soft blue. Give it a name and then hit OK. This is gonna be our background. However, it's pretty flat. I wanna add some more depth to it. So let's go to the effects and presets and look for the CC vignettes. Drag that to the solid, which is going to create some darker edges on that solid, giving it more character. All right, next up, let's create the text. And I'm going to type feeling. Then the other text is going to be good, but let's first focus on this one. With the text selected, head over to the character window. And by the way, if you can't find this or any other window that I refer to in this video, you can always go to the menu on top, a window, and from here, activate any window. So let's go back to the character window, and we're going to choose a certain font, a color, and whatnot. Take your time to stylize your text. I definitely like yellow, as it is in contrast with the blue background. So that makes it pop. I'm also going to add a black stroke around it. Now, since we're designing a template, we need to keep in mind that users can change the text. Now, imagine that we want to align the text in the middle, which we can do with the align window. Now, if we were to change the text to, let's say, high, that text doesn't sit in the middle anymore. So, we have to go over to the paragraph window and from there center the text, and then go back to the align window and then align the text to the middle of the comp. And now, if I change the text back to feeling, it's going to stay in the center. So, that's always something to think about when creating animated templates. All right. The idea now is to make the text come in from the side and then follow a curved path. So let's go up to the toolbar and select the pen tool. With the text layer selected, you want to draw an arc like this. You can use the levers to get the exact curve that you want. Once done, head over to the text properties in the timeline and under text path options, you'll find an option to choose the path that the text needs to follow, which is going to be that mask that we just created. The text snaps to that path now and we get to see some more options. But I'm interested in the margin. With this property, we can let the text slide over that that path. So I'm going to push it off the canvas and make sure that it's far enough. Because if the user is going to type in a longer text, it would still show in the canvas. Then set a keyframe at the start by enabling the stopwatch. We're going to go forward in time and set the margin to zero. This will be the middle point. Then go forward again and push it out to the other side of the canvas. This already animates the text, but there's a lot more fine tuning that needs to be done. Starting off at the middle keyframe, my text should be in the center. And because my path isn't perfectly aligned, it's off centered now. But we can easily fix that. On the bottom of the composition window, click on the grid options and choose proportional grid. We can now select the entire mask pad and use that to move the entire text. Keep in mind that we'll also create a bottom text, so you might want to have this one a little bit higher. All right, we can disable the grid now, and let's have a look at the keyframes. In the middle, I want the text to go a little bit slower, so I can right-click that keyframe, go to keyframe assistant, and choose easy ease. This makes the animation already better, but it's not perfect yet. So with that property selected, we're going to change the timeline to graph view. This allows us to see the actual curve of what the animation is doing. Now, there are a few different graph types. So from the bottom, click on this menu to make sure it's set to edit speed graph because that's what we want to change. So how do we read such a curve? Well, the higher it goes, the faster that the animation will play and the lower, the slower. So the first thing that I notice is that my center keyframe comes to a complete stop because it sits at the bottom. I don't want that. So let's move that point up. We have two points since we're dealing with an incoming and an outgoing curve. So let's move both points up a little bit. Now, to make the animation go slower around this point, pull on both levers to flatten this curve. We want to create this sort of skateboard ramp. So now the text goes really fast in the beginning, and then it slows towards the middle, and then speeds up again near the end. Perfect. And once you're happy with all of that, we can close the graph view and get started on the second text. Of course, we don't have to create that again from scratch. Simply duplicate your current text by hitting Ctrl or Command D. And with that duplicate selected, we're going to take the mask path again, and this time move it under the first text. And we're going to change it to to good. So now it says feeling good. Both animations are exactly the same, so let's do something about that. Open up the keyframes in a duplicated text, and we're simply going to swap the two outer keyframes. So that makes it move into the other direction. However, it does something weird towards the middle. That's because we've created a custom animation path, which doesn't really work the other way around. However, I do actually like this little quirky thing it does. So I think I'm going to leave it as it is, but if you do like to change it, then just go back into the graph view and simply adjust the curve. We can see that the middle keyframe goes over the middle line, and that's what's causing the bounce. So we're going to have to bring it down, and like before, bring it loose from the middle line so that the animation doesn't stop. So now the animation does look more perfect, but I'm going to undo these actions as I like that little quirk. But that is up to you. I'm actually feeling really good right now because my animation is done. All there's left to do is transform this into a motion graphics template. To do that, head over to the window and choose Essential Graphics. From this panel, we're going to select the composition in which we've been 
stream working. And now we'd like to define which properties the end user can change. So obviously that's going to be the text itself. We can expand the later properties to find the source text and just simply drag that into the essential graphics window. Do this for both the top and bottom text. We want to give a clear label to each text field. So feeling is going to be top text and good is going to be bottom text. We can leave the default text as it is. Now if you click on edit properties, we can also enable that the end user has the ability to change the font or size of that text. Now this is up to you, but I don't often do that as a template is usually designed with a certain text style in mind. But I just want you guys to know that the option is there. You can also choose a thumbnail for the template. Simply scrub on your timeline to where both texts are visible and then click on set poster time from the essential graphics window. Finally, give your template a name. Let's go for fly in text or something and then click on export motion graphics template. Save the project and then choose where you want to save it. We can either do that in our own library so that it is immediately accessible in Premiere or we can pick local drive and export it to somewhere on our computer. So that way we can send this template over to a client, a colleague or perhaps on a marketplace. Let's choose that option and then hit OK. Let's now open up Adobe Premiere Pro and we want to go to the essential graphics window. From the browse tab you'll find an option in the bottom to install a motion graphics template. Click on that and browse to your exported template, select it and hit OK. And there it is. Drag the template into your timeline and if you have it selected from the essential graphics window make sure that you are in the edit tab. We can now change the text. So let's do that and go for enjoy and then the bottom text is your day. And that is how you can make your own motion graphics templates. And don't forget to check out the other tutorials and the Adobe's learned from the pro series. Thank you so much for watching and as always stay creative.